We're so glad you're listening to the Children's Hour podcast. You can also get our shows early at patreon.com slash the Children's Hour. For a very limited amount of time, you can play along with the Children's Hour by donating $25 or more, and you'll get a deck of Children's Hour playing cards. Play with us. Please donate at childrenshour.org. Thank you, and enjoy the show. What is the instrument that every single rhinoceros has, but none of them play? I don't, I don't know what. The trombone. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's time for the Children's Hour. Kids Public, Public Radio. Lots of room for the short and the tall. Oh, the world is big and the world is small. So there's lots of room for the short and the tall. Oh, the world is far and the world is wide. But there are many different ways to see the other side. Oh, the world is far and the world is wide. But there are many different ways to see the other side. You can travel on a boat. You can travel on a boat. You can travel on a plane. You can travel on a plane. You can travel in a dance. You can travel in a dance. You can travel in a game. You can travel in a game. You can travel on a bus. You can travel on a bus. You can travel on a train. You can travel on a train. You can travel in a song. You can travel in a song. You can travel in a name. You can travel in a name. Ella Jenkins from a CD called Multicultural Songs for Children. The world is big, the world is small. That's a Pete Seeger tune. You're listening to the Children's Hour. I'm Katie Stone. I'm here with a bunch of great people. Hello, everyone. And who do we have with us today? Hi, it's Lucy. Hi, it's Daniel. Hello, it's Melissa. Hi, it's Corbett. Hello, it's Isaac. Hi, it's Kodiak. Hello, it's Octavia. Hello, it's Zen. Hello, it's Amadeus. Well, I am really excited about today's show, you all, because for one thing, it's fall. And typically around mid-October in America, there's this holiday called Columbus Day, where this guy who came over here from Spain, he was Italian, says he discovered this country, but it turns out there were already people here. And in the state of New Mexico, we don't celebrate Columbus Day at all. We celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day. Kids on the crew, what do you think Indigenous Peoples Day is about? Is it like it used to be Columbus Day, but then Columbus didn't actually discover America and we have to give credit to the Native Americans? Yeah, I definitely think that's it. And yeah, Lucy. It's a holiday that's for what's important about different cultures and what's important about different people. Definitely, it's a day we can honor the many, many cultures that have been here for thousands of years. Yeah, Zen. For a while, it's been toted as Columbus, he has discovered America, when he probably was not even the first non-Native American person to discover in air quotes, the Americas, but he didn't really do anything very nice when he came here. He was here to plunder, get gold, and get out. I also think he was looking for like sugar and other spices, and he was looking to go, trying to go sail to India because they had a lot of those rare spices there, but he ended up sailing to America. Well, definitely, there was the whole trade aspect of what was going on in his mission for Columbus. But when he got to the Americas, or what we later called the Americas, there were already people here with whole towns and families and established systems of governance. And that's the stuff we're going to learn about a little bit today with John Jahadi. He's the cultural educator at the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we're also going to give you some tools to learn more. 
And I was lucky enough to get to record an all-women mariachi band that just happens to rehearse in a yard in my neighborhood. I heard them. I went to see them who was playing this beautiful music. And it was a bunch of teenage girls along with their teacher. Could not believe what I saw. And I couldn't believe what I heard, which is why I recorded it for their radio debut of Mariachi Flor del Alma. That's coming up on the show today. We're also going to have a book review of a graphic novel called Under the Cottonwood Tree, and it's based on a New Mexican fairy tale. That's coming up, thanks to Thaniel. And we're going to hear from the Extinction Diaries kids about what happened when hundreds of thousands of birds suddenly died just a few weeks ago here in the Southwest. It's all coming up on the Children's Hour. But first, this is Joanne Shenandoah. A long time ago, I was afraid of the dark. I took a long look down deep in my heart All my fears were inside because I didn't know There's a light shining for you wherever you go time you see a bird when she flies there's a song in the air a whisper in the wind i believe in their power all spirits sing Shining on us I believe, I believe It must be love I believe, I believe There's a spirit guiding our every move I believe in a spirit In a spirit called love Joanne Shenandoah, the title track from her kids' CD, All Spirits Sing. Joanne Shenandoah is a singer, composer, acoustic guitarist based in the United States, and she's a member of the Wolf Clan, part of the Oneida Nation. You're listening to the Children's Hour, and with us on the show again is our friend from the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center, cultural educator, John Jahadi. Welcome back to the Children's Hour, John. It's wonderful to be back with you, Katie. And I 
again, truly appreciate all that you do and all the contributions you help into helping not only entertain, but educate. That's the most important thing. And that's really our goal to help educate the public as it applies to our public community. So it's really an honor again. Well, thank you for being on the show with us and doing your part in helping us all be a lot smarter about Indigenous America. So we want to talk about Indigenous Peoples Day. And the kids took a stab as to what they think it's all about, kind of a replacement for Columbus Day. I'd love to hear your take on Columbus Day and why we should replace it with Indigenous Peoples Day and what that day is all about. Let me begin, first of all, uh, to kind of give people an understanding of why it's important to us to recognize this particular date. Just imagine yourself going into a movie theater and maybe it's already, the movie's already been going on for half an hour. Or you get a book that you want to read and there's the first three to four chapters of the book gone and all you can start out is chapter four or five. You're not going to get the whole picture. You're not going to get the whole story. Well, unfortunately, that's what Columbus Day implies is that the history of the Western Hemisphere, all of those groups of people that lived in the Western Hemisphere did not begin in 1492. Centuries before, even before the United States became a country, even before the Roman Empire became the Roman Empire, and even before Jesus was born, there were human beings on this side of the world that they were building communities. They had families. They were growing crops. They were building cities. They were doing all the things we do pretty much today at a different uh, level of technologies. It's not that we're changing history. And sometimes people who perhaps have their own perspective of history as it applies to them, they will accuse those who want to add to that history of being revisionists. We're, we're changing it. And that's what the word revisionist means, is to change it. We don't look at it in that regard. Our responsibility here at the Indian Public Cultural Center, it says in our mission statement, is to accurately and certainly with respect tell the story of those groups of people that were living here long before those groups of people who came from the other side of the world came to this side, that we deserve the right to tell our story. So with that responsibility, that's why we feel it's important to Not only certainly we recognize that Christopher Columbus, he was a real human being. We recognize, we know where he came from. We know his family. But what we don't know is really all those groups of people that lived on this side of the world, their contributions, their inclusion into the global society that we have now of how we participate in that global society. We know that corn, beans, squash, potatoes, all of those foodstuffs that we use today in our diets have its origins here in the Western Hemisphere that were not known on the Eastern Hemisphere. So that's why we're not looking at it in replacing Columbus Day. We're simply saying that this is the story that's left out. This is chapters one, two, and three that were not included in what we were taught, most of us, especially as U.S. citizens, about those indigenous peoples here in the Western Hemisphere. So we don't want to change history. We simply want to say, hey, you forgot our part. We want to add to that. How is Indigenous Peoples Day celebrated differently than Columbus Day? Someone asked me a similar kind of questions as compared to the difference between Native and Indigenous, okay? So let me just kind of point out what my own perspective is when I look at those two words. And again, they're words, they're terms that we use almost daily, especially as it applies to here in New Mexico. Well, Native oftentimes is very generic or means it can apply to anything or anybody. You could say you're a Native New Yorker or you're a Native uh, Colorado, from, from Colorado. That means that's where you originate. That's where you initially come from. But perhaps there was some of those who came even before you. Maybe that person came from West Virginia, moved to Colorado, and you've lived there for several generations, but now you're a native from Colorado. When we say the word indigenous, it has a much more specific impact as it applies to those groups of people who have always been there. That's the slight difference. Even though the words mean almost the same, native that is a little more can be applied to everybody or a number of groups. But indigenous can be more applicable to those groups that have a more connection to their sense of place like 
you know, an atom. Let me give you, I'm a science teacher, so I use all these science metaphors. An atom, which is the smallest part of a piece of matter, has a central part. The nucleus. We as human beings also, as, especially as indigenous people, have a center of place where we belong. And that's really the story of the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center. We are responsible for telling that story. We take great pride and we take amount, a certain amount of energy on our daily responsibilities to ensure these stories are told because they really need to be told because oftentimes they're not. So that's our goal, our responsibility. So to be clear, indigenous refers to the people who have lived wherever they live for millennia, thousands and thousands of years. So they were the first people to live in America. Correct. And, and you know, the thing about it is that you use the word America, indigenous. Those are words, those are European words. But in our own languages, we already have words for who we are as people, who we are as human beings. My mother comes from a group of people. We say who we are as Gome. That means we're from one particular group that we used to call ourselves in our language, Gome. We now call that group of people Laguna. My father comes from another group of people. In our language, we say who we are is Ashui. And we now call those groups of people in the English language Zuni. We have our neighbors who we now refer to as Navajo, but in their language, they say who they are as Dene. So all of these groups of people who were here in their own languages already had a name for themselves. And even this, these two continents, the North and South of America, there were names already amongst these groups of people for those lands. It's just now that we call it America. All of these terms certainly come from those groups who felt it was their right to, I'm going to label you this, like, uh, you, we know you as Katie, right? You're Katie. But say maybe I have a prejudice against the name starting with K, so I'll say, well, I don't like the name Katie. I want to call you June or Mary. Well, whose right is it for me to tell you how I want to call you? So it's great to know that every single indigenous group of people in the world have their own name for themselves. But on Indigenous Peoples Day, how will you celebrate? Our responsibility here at the Indian Public Cultural Center certainly is to commemorate that day. But every day it is our charge. It is our responsibility to ensure that the narrative of those who preceded us, our ancestors, that we tell their story, that their voices, that their stories, everything about them is continued every single day. It's just that in our society today, we like celebrating things like birthdays and anniversaries, and those are fine. But every day we celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day by making sure that we tell a story that is respectful, that is historically correct, both by science and those who have preceded us, that we continue that story on a daily basis. That's how we celebrate it. John Jahadi is the museum culture educator at the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And you can learn more about the IPCC at Indian Pueblo. Org. We also have posted to childrenshour.org a direct link to the educational materials that are available at the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center's website. This is A Tribe Called Bread.
The Children's Hour is produced by The Children's Hour Incorporated, a nonprofit dedicated to producing high-quality kids' public radio. Find out more at childrenshour.org. Support provided by Electric Playhouse, an all-ages dining and interactive entertainment wonderland based in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Experience gaming in a whole new way, transporting you to another reality. See for yourself at electricplayhouse.com. Support is also provided by the City of Albuquerque Cultural Services Department and the Urban Enhancement Trust Fund. All alone and quite contrary, no one to help share my worries, nothing more I can do. All alone and sometimes blue. sisters Rita and Priscilla Coolridge and Priscilla's daughter Laura Satterfield and you're listening to the children's hour we're glad you have the radio on we're pretty excited because coming up is the radio debut of an all-women mariachi band that is mostly teenage girls this is mariachi flor del alma right here on the children's hour Can't. 
A very traditional song, Cielito Lindo, right here on the Children's Hour, the radio debut of an all-women mariachi band. Please introduce yourselves. We are Mariachi Flor del Alma, and I'm Ana Sandoval Montoya. I play the vihuela, and on the guitaron we have... Uh, I'm Leila Naomi. I'm 18 years old. And on the violin we have... I'm Jasmine Nuri Sandoval, and I'm 19 years old. And I'm Zita Montoya, and I'm 17. Well, we are just so lucky on the Children's Hour to be here at your rehearsal, which is in a backyard in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we're so excited to have your radio debut. Tell us what is next. Our next song, um, it was one of my dad's favorites. He's from Taos, from northern New Mexico. He's also Jasmine's grandpa. And the name of this song is Ojitos Verdes. One, two, one. Suspiran aquellos ojitos verdes Me suspiran con la vida porque todavía me quieren Ay, 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 ay ¿Dónde andarán? Esos ojitos que me hicieron suspirar Ay, 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 ay So much mariachi Flor del Alma is playing for us on the Children's Hour. We're sitting in on a rehearsal on a beautiful day in Albuquerque, New Mexico, in the middle of a yard. It's quite lovely here. Ana Sandoval, you are the leader. I'd love to know more about the instruments the girls are playing and you're playing. Leila is playing the guitarón. Okay, so it's basically like a, what's well, called a guitarón which is the same spelling as a guitar, except you add an R-O-N at the end, mainly because in Spanish you add that to say something that's bigger than something else. Um, but the, the whole general idea is not strumming the guitarron, it's pulling the strings, so it has a total of six strings, and you play it in octaves. So I have, you know, for example, like A and A. Um, that's pretty much it. The, the thing is it doesn't have, like, frets. So you kind of have to listen and make sure the, the octaves and the notes match each other so it doesn't sound all, you know, weird. My instrument is called a vihuela. It 
came from Guadalajara, it was brought from Mexico. And it's basically a little round back guitar that uh, only has five strings instead of six strings. So it doesn't have the E string, uh, the, the low E string, it only has the high E string. And it smells really good. You can <laughs> smell the inside of the wood. It's a beautiful instrument. And it's called a vihuela. Tanto tiempo disfrutamos este amor, nuestras almas ya se acercaron. Tanto así que yo guardo tu sabor como tú llevas también sabor a mí. And that's my vihuela. Um, so my name is Zita Montoya and I play the violin. My name is Jasmine and I also play the violin. I've been playing for about six years now. I started off with classical music, but about two years ago I found a really deep passion for mariachi music. Um, I've been playing since sixth grade and now I'm 19, so I want to say about seven years, mm -hmm. eight years I've been playing. I started because my uncle who passed away was a mariachi, he played the trumpet. And I've always like felt like I really had a deep connection with music, but mariachi music is the one that caught my heart. I love the style, the way we sound, like I just love mariachi music. So the next song is like our signature song because we are Mariachi Flor del Alma and this is called Flor de las Flores. Mariachi Flor del Alma, their debut performance on the radio here on the Children's Hour. And we have a link posted to their Facebook page at childrenshour.org. Or you can also search for them, Mariachi Flor del Alma. Spin your poi high. Spin your poi now spin yourself round and round, stamp your feet on the ground. Spin your boy high, spin your boy low, spin your boy five. 
is a collaborative effort out of Auckland, New Zealand, and features lyrics sung in indigenous languages and English. And we have a video posted of Spin Your Poi to childrenshour.org, and you can see exactly how the moves are supposed to be done. You're listening to the Children's Hour. In the background, Ronald Royball, Spirits of Akama. Coming up, we have Thaniel's book review of Under the Cottonwood Tree and The Extinction Diaries. You're listening to the Children's Hour, Kids Public Radio. We'll be right back. The Children's Hour is supported in part by an award from New Mexico Arts, a division of the Department of Cultural Affairs, and by the National Endowment for the Arts. Children's Hour listeners, are you old enough to vote? Learn what you need to do to vote in your area by going to vote.org. There you can confirm your voter registration and find out everything you need to know in order to go cast your ballot. That's vote.org. Extinction Diaries. The sudden death of large numbers of animals known as a die-off is an event all too common across the planet. However, the massive bird die-off that began sweeping the western United States in summer 2020 may be the largest ever known in the U.S. with millions of birds dead. A senior researcher at Cornell University Lab believes the tragedy is unprecedented. Record-breaking wildfires, heat, and a sudden plunge in temperatures all may be factors. There are witnesses who say they saw birds just fall from the sky. Experts say the sudden deaths add significantly to extinction probability. 
In the last 50 years, the U.S. and Canada lost one-third of its birds, a number close to 3 billion. Crashing populations of insects, amphibians, reptiles, and mammals are also happening. Some birds are disappearing even faster. For instance, in the same 50 years, one half of all grassland birds died off. Birds are an indicator species, a sort of canary in the coal mine to all Earth's biological systems. Unfortunately, this massive die-off is just the latest in a long line of recent wildlife tragedies. My name is Arne Oliveira, and this is a Small World Radio production. I'll be sleeping under stars tonight Not sure exactly where I'll be Maybe underneath the pale moonlight Or maybe underneath that tree Black smoke Riding in the sky tonight Everything will be alright If you let go Gathered in a place tonight Everything will be alright If you let go
book review of Under the Conwood Tree, written by Paul and Carlos Meyer, art by Margaret Hardy, review by Nathaniel Lentz. In this graphic novel, two brothers and their friend who live in New Mexico stumble upon a curandera's home and are chased away. The littlest brother steals a magic cookie from the curandera that turns him into a calf. The older brother Armando and his friends now must go on a magic journey full of adventure and friendship to turn the little brother back. This book was truly awesome and a real tearjerker. Mythical monsters, old New Mexican legends, and beautiful art all come together to create one hair-raising novel. I hope you find the time to pick this book up and go on an amazing and magical adventure back to 1949 New Mexico. The book is called Under the Cottonwood Tree, El Susto de la Curandera, and it is published by UTCT Book. Visit childrenshour.org, and we've posted a link. A long time ago, when everything was still new, up in the sky were all these stars. Amongst them was this little star who was very interested, curious about everything. This little star traveled across the sky, would stop and examine so many things. One day, this little star came down to Earth. It traveled all around the Earth, looking at all the animals, all the birds, all the plants, just everything that was alive. One day, it came near this village. There was a sound coming from this village that was so beautiful and so wonderful, the little star could not believe it. It stayed close to this village. It had never heard anything so beautiful in all of the heavens and all of the places it went to around the earth. So it stayed close to this village. It listened and listened. It just couldn't get enough of hearing that beautiful sound. One day it got to thinking, I am a star and I am supposed to be up there in the sky with the other stars. I had better go back. So it went back up into the sky and was with the other stars. But it began to think about this beautiful sound it had heard coming from that village. And it thought, I would like to go back and hear it some more. Then it began to get very lonesome. It began to feel very sad. So when the stars were talking about different things, the little star asked them if it could go back and live near that village so it could hear that beautiful sound. The star said, no, you are a star and you belong up here in the sky. So it didn't say anything. It tried to be involved in all the things that stars do shining up in the sky, moving here and there. But it got so lonely, it went back to the stars again and said, I am so lonesome and I feel so bad. I want to go and stay near that village forever to hear that sound. The stars said, you cannot do that because those are people they have things that they have to do in order to stay alive. They have work to do. 
They have to gather food. They have to build their houses. They have to look after their children. They have to make their clothes. And they have to live. And if you are close by there, shining around, they will all be looking at you. You will disturb their lives. And they will not get along very good. So you can't do that. So the little star thought and thought. And finally then said to the other stars, if I can find a way to be close to that village without them seeing me, can I stay there? And they said, yes, if you can find a way to stay there without disturbing the people, then you can go. So it went close to that village and it looked around and it saw this tree, a cottonwood tree, growing close to the village. And the star said, I will stay inside that tree where I can hear that beautiful sound that comes from that village. And that sound was the sound of the people, the women, the men, the children, laughing and saying all these good words to each other. And the star still is in that cottonwood tree, hoping to hear those beautiful sounds. That was Tevaka, which is an oceanic band comprised of indigenous South Pacific Islanders. Before them, you heard the star in the cottonwood tree. That's Mary Louise Defender Wilson from a CD called My Relatives Say. And before Thaniel's book review, you heard Emily Wuramara with Black Smoke. Emily is an indigenous Australian singer and songwriter. And then we had the Extinction Diaries. Thanks for tuning in to the Children's Hour this week, celebrating Indigenous people everywhere. The Children's Hour is written and produced by Katie Stone at the Sunspot Solar Studio in Albuquerque, New Mexico, with help from all of us on the kids' crew. Many thanks to the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center Museum culture educator, John Jihadi, for being with us on the show today. 
We were grateful to record Mariachi Floor de Alma's rehearsal. Many thanks to the band, as well as to our generous host, Mr. James Torres, and thanks to our engineer, Andres Martinez. We also want to thank the kids from the Extinction Diaries out of Ready and Red Bluff, California at KFOI. Our podcasts can be found wherever you get your podcasts or patreon.com slash the children's hour. We post photos and more on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Find us at TCH Radio. Find lots of information about us at childrenshour.org. The Children's Hour can be heard on more than 80 stations around the world. Hello to our new listeners tuned in on KICI in Iowa City, Iowa. The Children's Hour is distributed by the Children's Hour Incorporated and by the Public Radio Exchange PRX and by the Pacifica Radio Network. Thanks for listening to the Children's Hour. You've been listening to the Children's Hour. We're produced by the Children's Hour Incorporated, a tax exempt nonprofit based in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and we're dedicated to producing high quality kids public radio. Find out more about us at childrenshour.org. Support provided by our sustaining listeners and from the city of Albuquerque. We are one Albuquerque. CABQ.gov. We also had support from the Laughing Buddha Fund and the Limestone Foundation. Support was also provided by the Infinite Gesture Fund at the Albuquerque Community Foundation. Our theme music was written by C.K. Barlow. We'll be back next time for another edition of The Children's Hour, Kids Public Radio. I love The Children's Hour.